Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over this weekend's uh, UFC card from a DFS perspective, and we're going to do what we did last week. It was very, very well received, and I think it was pretty well conceived by me as well, where I'm going to break up the DFS uh, analysis into two videos. The, uh, the first one today is going to be going over the plays, going over who the good plays are. Um, and we're going to be separating that analysis from part two, which is going to be pure lineup build. Um, and as you guys know, I hope you guys know, I, I think that that distinction is very undersold and it's very underappreciated. And uh, it's, as you'll see, I mean, it's not that difficult to come up with good plays, but to figure out how to put those guys together or that those girls together in lineups specifically designed for the contest that you're playing using all the various tools available to you is, is a totally different skill. And uh, we did it last week and it was very, very successful, both from a, well, forget how I did, you know, but, but everybody seemed to like it and learn from it. So we're going to do that from now on. We're going to do DFS. I call it DFS one or DFS two. I don't know what I'm going to call it, but this, this video is, is completely showing you who the best players are. Uh, and then we're also going to be doing the, the, um, I'm going to do our breakdown of the fights and all that stuff, but um, we're not going to worry about how to put these guys together in lineups. And we're still going to do our betting breakdown tomorrow. And uh, that's it. Okay. So the first thing that I would like to cover is the one uh, line movement fight. Um, that would be Alan Nascimento was scheduled to fight uh, Sue Madarji. And he was priced at minus 300 or something like that. So as a result, the price was 9,100 for him and 7,100 for Sumadarji. Now, Nascimento had to drop out. So they replaced him with uh, Tim Elliott. And Tim Elliott is coming in at a at win odds of minus 130. Um, so Sumadarji at, say, plus 110. Uh, at a price of 7,100 is basically a theoretical lock. Um, now, again, we, we're not talking about, you know, who you think is going to win. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll, we'll talk about that. But from a mathematical perspective, he's a theoretical lock. His price is if he was a two to one underdog, and he's basically a plus 110. Um, so that's a decision that you're going to have to make um, whether you want to eat that. Now, uh, we'll talk about more with, about this lineup construction, but usually these fighters tend to be sort of highly owned, but not ever as owned as they should be. Um, for whatever reason, they, you know, people don't respect the, uh, the line movement, I guess, uh, not the line movement, the line value, uh, especially if maybe his, maybe his inside the distance line isn't the greatest, but I mean, it's not even out yet. I, I know what I saw. I mean, his last fight against Matt Schnell, I mean, he had to, went to war with this guy. I mean, so I don't know, like Tim Elliott certainly has, you know, grappling upside. It can maybe keep, keep this fight under control, but nonetheless, 7,100 for a plus 110 is just something that can't be ignored. So we're going to start by just put, putting him in, putting him in. All right. So let's go from the bottom of the card. We have first fight of the night. We have a woman's fight between Rayanne, Amanda, Ramanda, and uh, Talita Alinkar. Um, what's interesting about this fight is there are both these fighters can grapple. And whenever you have a fight that might take place on the mat, you know, you have to really think about it because as you know, I mean, the drafting scoring does reward this type of situation, but let's, um, let's take a look at the metrics right from the beginning. You have Amanda or Amanda, whatever, or Amanda, Amanda, uh, it's minus 145, which is pretty well in line with her, her uh, DraftKings price. And when it comes to the inside the distance lines, um, the, all the upside looks to be in Amanda because she's got about a plus 230 inside the distance line where Alan Carr has an inside the distance line about plus 500 or something like that. The only thing that makes Alan Carr move up a little bit is that she does have, I guess, more wrestling upside or her path is more um in line with getting takedowns than armanda armanda can actually probably win a striking battle um but nonetheless uh 
Now, that inside the distance line is extremely poor. So I I don't know at 7,900 if the her takedown upside is going to be able to overcome that lack of an inside the distance line. I think that Armanda at 8,300 is going to be pretty low owned. And at you know, 220 inside the distance or whatever, I think it's very, very reasonable. Um, Taisha Tyra, Tasura Tyra versus Carlos Hernandez, extremely wide win odds, uh, excuse me, uh, DraftKings price implying some very wide win odds and the actual lines not to disappoint somewhere between minus 550 and minus 600. Uh, not to mention the fact that Tyra's inside the distance line is very strong, minus 120, minus 125, where by itself, it's not the greatest for 9,400 when you when you include the fact that his inside the distance wins are also going to probably come with takedowns and control time. Um, very, very strong premium, you know, high salary play. Um, so I certainly consider him a priority. Carlos Hernandez, uh, you know, he, he just doesn't win often enough. I mean, that's a very pedestrian way of looking at it, but if you're a five five one underdog. I mean, you really you really need a lot of things going for you to be playable in DFS. That's what I can say. Like, if, if you knew that Tyra was going to be seventy percent owned somehow, you know, and 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 Carlos's all of his upside were you know knockouts or whatever, then maybe. But I I think it's a, you know probably going to be a zero. I mean, probably I'll probably have zero exposure to Hernandez. All right. Um, you have Luana Santos versus Steph, uh, Stephanie Egger. And we've, we've been on both these uh, women before. So in Santos's last fight, she was um, 8,300 against Juliana Miller. And she was a very strong play due to her inside the distance line. And she did not disappoint. Um, she got the first round KO and scored 116 draft teams points. So she's right back. And, you know, nothing nothing to say poorly about her. Um, you have Stephanie Egger, who, you know, she's an interesting cat. You know, she 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 really doesn't go for any striking, but she's got a really good submission game and a really good grappling skill set. You know, like she uh against uh well, Shiana Young got she got a KO, but I think it was must have been ground and pound yet. So two two takedowns from ground and pound. Jessica Rose Clark, two takedowns and a sub. She lost to Mary Buena Silva. That's certainly nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, that's the problem. When you're a grappler like this and you face just someone much better, you're just going to get rolled. Um, and then she had a very, very nice win against Aline Perez, and that win has aged pretty well. And then in her last fight against Alex Siva last summer, or like in April, it was a weird fight. You know, she was, I guess, doing okay, and, and, and Alex Siva just went for a kind of like a Hail Mary knee bar, it worked and and Egger tapped. So um she definitely has submission upside, which is uh which is which is pretty big, you know. Um uh, let's take a look at the odds. You have Egger plus 135. So as far as the the odds go, it's pretty pretty similar line value, but let's take a look at the inside the distance line. You have Santos inside the distance like plus 200. I mean that's not bad. Is it much better though than I mean? It's, I guess similar to the other lady that we talked about earlier, who was um, Armanda. Remember Armanda? Just to remind us, she was um, her inside the distance line is plus two forty. So she's plus two forty, and you have Santos is what was what was she again? Plus two hundred. So Santos is a little bit better. Let's take a look at the. Price difference. I'm just comparing these two here. Santos 8600, Alan Car and uh, Armanda 8300. So I guess they're sort of similar, you know, for their price. So I think they're both pretty reasonable. And and Egger, you know, just because of her style. I mean, if she can get one or two takedowns and a submission, I mean, that's going to be going to score really well and win. So she's a very very live underdog. So we'll put her in the, you know, we're not playing both these, but just, you know, this is kind of our pool of good plays, sort of. Uh, did I put Tyra in? Yeah, I did. Uh, Steve Garcia versus uh, Costa. We we looked at this fight last week, but we're going to do it again. 
This fight rates to finish. Uh, it's a very, very, uh, the inside the distance line of both fighters, I think is very, very strong. You have Costa, who is, uh, his inside the distance line is like minus 110, which is right what you need at 9K. And even Garcia at plus 350 or 375, it's actually not as good as I thought it was going to be. It's really odd, you know, because from what I've seen of Garcia, I mean, he just knocks people out. You know, he look at this, KO, KO, KO. I mean, I don't think he does he even have a win with it by decision. I don't know. So I don't know. I don't exactly understand the, the, the high inside the distance line on him. I mean, if he's two to one to win, I mean, how, how, what do they have him by decision? Or see it by decision. They have him at, let's see something. At plus 700. Well, something's wrong with these, you know, let's, well, obviously nothing wrong with these lines. They're really screwing you on some of these, some of these lines, but I think the inside the distance line is very fair. For Garcia here, I don't. I don't really see the, the variation where he wins and does not get a finish. So I think that both fighters are really, really strong DraftKings players. And in a similar way to I was considering locking that fight in last week, I think that's a probably a good. That's probably a good idea. As a matter of fact, um, the only thing that's different. Well, I shouldn't say this because all the fights smashed last week, but but generally, um. I would say that that you know Garcia would uh, if he wins he's definitely in the optimal but there there's a lot of seven k guys here so like for example like Edgar at seventy six hundred she can outscore Garcia in a win um, but are there really I will get we'll get to Anthony Smith we'll get we'll get to other guys that have shots um, but I still think that you want to get significant exposure to both those fighters and they're both very very good players All right um. Hyun Sung Park versus Shannon Ross. Um. Okay, so so at ninety five hundred, I mean, you better you better knock this guy out in the first round, you know, or have a lot of takedowns. Um, let's take a look at the inside distance line. First of all, he's minus seven hundred. What has happened to Shannon Ross? Oh my God! Well, we'll show we'll show you what happened. You have Sun Young Park inside the distance, like minus what? That's 375. What is he in round one even? He's minus 125 in round one. I mean, okay, we're, we're just going to talk about, we're not going to talk about from a betting perspective, but I mean, for, as far as the numbers go, I mean, how, how do you not play this? I mean, he's favored to knock the guy out in the first round. I mean, he's got to be just as good of a play, if not better than Tyra, no? I don't know why wow. beats beats me. Let's take a look at these th this for a second. I'm a little little interested. So in his last fight, he was against I guess Duchu Choi or whatever, and he won by third round sub with a takedown, scoring 73 fantasy points. Let, let, let's I don't know if we're supposed to do this, but let's let's get into his career here. Um, this is against Young Jeff Choi. And then, okay, he's got the submission round one against someone I've never heard of. And then road to UFC here, TKO. Oh, did we? Oh, so we, we saw him in this fight, if I'm not mistaken, maybe. I, I guess. What about, so this, oh, so this was the, let me, let me recap this fight here. Hold on. Was this the one where, hold on a minute, where we got to see all these? No, this was not the one that we bet on. Okay, so he won this road to Singapore, and then he ended up in this Lewis Spivak card. I mean, he wasn't that great. I guess the problem is here, Shannon Ross has got knocked out in the first round, his last three fights, pretty much. His last fight, he got knocked out in 17 seconds. The fight before that, one minute. And before that, second round KO. And then I guess before that, Ekweg, first round submission. So, yeah, I, I guess this is why. It's too bad. 
I mean, he's had some success in the past. I guess uh, I guess he's just going to get knocked out in the first round, I suppose. We'll talk about this in the betting breakdown, uh, but we're going to – not to tease this, but I don't know. I don't know about this. Anyway, sport of the numbers, Kim Young Park, really, really great play. And according to the numbers, Shannon Ross, uh, he just doesn't win often enough, right? I mean, he's – what's he, minus – plus 600, something like that. Is that what we said? Plus 400. Just doesn't win often enough. And when he does win, is Park going to be that popular? Is he? I guess. And we'll look at the ownership later. But I'll tell you this. If I get this Shannon Ross in some in 150 max, I'm not going to I'm not gonna say no out of that. I'd rather play him than, than Carlos Hernandez, if you want to know the truth. Um, I, I know what I'm getting with to, to, to Shiro Tyra. I mean, the Hyunsung Park is not out of Anyway, uh, maybe that wasn't particularly analytical, but nonetheless, Hyun Young Park, if he's minus 120 to finish in the first round, you probably have to play. All right, Kanan Song versus Kevin Gisette. Gisette minus 145 and pretty well lined as far as DraftKings price goes, 8,500. Let's take a look at the inside the distance line here. We have Gisette inside the distance is plus 160, which is pretty good, sir. I mean, this is a really, really good inside the distance line for this price. I mean, it's better than those two ladies that we talked about earlier, right? Between uh, uh, Armanda and Santos, right? So Gisette looks like a pretty strong play. And then on the other side of this, you have Song. Song inside of distance is plus like 320 or so. Um, all right. At what's his price? 7,700. I mean, quite honestly, I'd rather just go all the way down to Steve Garcia with a similar, maybe a little worse inside the distance line before playing Song Kanan. And the other thing that I will alert you guys to is this play is getting quite a bit of steam. Um, he, he just won as a pretty big underdog. Um, I think we had him by decision in that fight, by the way. Well, we'll we'll have to remind ourselves. Or maybe we played Bedoya by decision. No, we played one of these guys by decision. He also knocked down Ian Gary before he got KO'd himself. Uh, he definitely seems like that kind of popular underdog this week. So he might get owned. So I think Jacet is probably a pretty strong GTP play here. All right. Um Andre Muniz versus the Iron Turtle, Young Jung Young Park. Uh, Park 8,800 versus Muniz 7,400. Uh, according to the lines, this looks pretty reasonable. Uh, oh, well, Park is only minus 175. I guess this is reasonable considering what these other fighters are priced at. We'll look at the inside the distance line, then we'll talk about the fight a little bit. You have Park inside is... What is he? Plus 130, reasonable enough. And Muniz inside the distance is plus 270. That's reasonable enough, too, given his price. As a matter of fact, Muniz is only a little bit better than, well, he is a little bit better than Steve Garcia, but he's a little bit more expensive. But consider him a very similar, I, I wouldn't say similar because his, Path is not like Steve Garcia. Steve Garcia can get like knockdowns and, and strikes. Some of that. Andre Muniz, if he wins, is going to be by getting uh, submissions. Um, and you know he came into the UFC with all kinds of, of of fanfare. You know, subbing everybody. And then his first fight, he he submitted Jacare Susan, a legend, in like very short order in the first minute as the underdog. Then he came back with another first round submission, you know, as a very moderate favorite. And then he beat was Uriah Hall, or Ryan Hall, whatever it is. He took the guy down and just dominated and nice and easy decision. Then ran into Brandon Allen, um, had not the greatest game plan in the world and got pretty much owned on the feet <laughs> um, everywhere. And uh, actually, I Muniz mean, is actually pretty good on the feet in this fight, but. Brandon Allen's really good. And then the Paul Craig fight, 
did take him down twice, but then he got kind of reversed or something and just got pounded off. So his last two fights have been very uninspiring. I will say this, that um, he's had a much tougher road in the last couple of fights than, than Park. Like Park has been, you know, he's had a very, very good manager the last four fights. You know, he, especially his last three, like he, he fought Joseph Holmes, who was pretty bad and, and with very, very poor grappling. And he just took him down and owned him for like two straight rounds before submitting. Him. And Dennis Tullulian, again, like he doesn't really have a lot of grappling chops himself and got subbed there pretty easily. And Duraev, you know, again, you know, just uh, Duraev actually is a little bit better grappler. So this was actually, I think this was actually a pretty strong win here. Um, but he hasn't really faced anybody who could really grapple in the same way that he can. And now, I mean, he's against Muniz, who has a very similar skill set. So I don't I don't feel as though Park, well, we'll talk, this is more of a betting breakdown, but I don't think Park at 8,800 is any, any great shakes, you know. But as far as the, the money line goes, as far as the metrics go, I guess both these guys are pretty good plays. And Muniz is certainly a very, you know, very, very live underdog at 7,400. Uh, Tim Elliott, we talked about the Summa Dersi side. And the Elliott side of this, I think, is pretty efficient. You know, he's he's 8,400, which is, you know, considering um, 8,400, I mean, considering his, um, his, his win odds, I think it's pretty reasonable. Um, he's going to have a poor inside the distance line, I believe, uh, even whenever it comes out. But he's probably going to have some takedown upside. Like, for example... We look at his his game log, so to speak. He had six takedowns against Victor Altamirano. He had four takedowns here. Um, I mean, he had no chance against Makayev, and he even got a takedown there. So um, I think that his wins are going to probably score pretty well. Um, uh, so there's that. And I also feel as though if Sumadarji does get some some ownership because of his you know money line that he's going to be a good bit of leverage. But I have to say that at the, this moment, I'm not seeing that much for Sumadarji in the industry. So we'll we'll check the ownerships as we do the uh, lineup breakdown, probably, when are we doing the lineup breakdown? Probably tomorrow night or Saturday morning, one or the other. Um, Hack Barras versus Jamie Malarkey, 8,700 versus 7,500. Um, nothing great about the line either way. Yeah, 180 is about what he's supposed to be. Look at the inside the distance line. Hacks press inside is plus 300 at that price. He's complete pass. He has no uh, grappling upside. I mean, he does have volume. That's just not going to be good enough for me. The other side of this, Malarkey, his inside the distance line is plus 520. It's pretty poor. Um, and unless he really shows me a lot of takedown upside, He's just not going to get there for me. Um, I mean, I, I do recall him getting some takedowns in some fights. Like before he got knocked out, he got he had three takedowns, and then the fight before that, he had three takedowns. But I'll say this: that his last two wins, well, Prado he had three takedowns, but he beat McDessie last week with no takedowns. So he might just go for that. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I mean, I, I think that, that probably this fight is probably a pass. And we've already identified, like, some pretty decent plays. So, I mean, you can't play everybody. Julio Roundtree versus Anthony Smith. Uh, Roundtree, 8,900 versus 7,300. So we'd be expecting to see Roundtree about a 2-1 to favorite. And uh, pretty much that's what we're getting. We'll expect to see Roundtree, I guess, at minus, at like plus 100 inside the distance to be a good play. And, He's minus 130, so that's obviously really strong. And you have Anthony Smith with a very reasonable inside the distance line, a plus 320. Uh, this is a very, very strong fight to target. Um, I will say that, and this is just kind of like my instinct, that this fight does have an opportunity to bust. I mean, I, Anthony Smith has some pretty good, you know, fight IQ. I mean, he's just been around the block. And... I don't think he's getting into a slugfest with, with Roundtree. I think he'll go for his takedowns and try to turn this into like a boring fight. 
Um, he can get, you know, he can get some, you know, he can get a sub, but uh, I will also say, by the way, that, that, that Smith actually showed some good on the feet stuff against, against Span. Um, but I think this fight does have the opportunity to bust. Like, I think that Roundtree could win a decision here. Um, just one of those fights where Smith gets maybe a takedown, doesn't get the sub, and but stays away from him long enough, you know, and Roundtree maybe gasses a little bit late and it comes, turns to a boring decision. So, like, for example, I think I'd much prefer the, um, the Garcia Costa fight to this one. Um, but the metrics certainly support these guys. I mean, 150, you're going to have to play both these guys. And then in the main event, uh, Sonia Dong versus uh, Christian Gutierrez, uh, 9,207K, and price is pretty reflective of that. Um, where most main events, I mean, you know, are going to be tough to ignore. I, I get the feeling this fight is going to bust and, 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 and let's not, let's not talk about our feelings for a second. Let's talk about some of the metrics. Hold on a second. Sorry about that. So, I mean, we look at the metrics here. You have song inside the distance is plus 100 or something like that, or minus one, which is okay. Right. That's what you want. But the thing is, again, is, is in these five round fights, a little misleading because because normally when you have an inside the distance line of minus 110, you're going to get the points from either rounds one, two, or three. But, you know, if, if what is Sonia Dong, Sonia Dong, uh, what does his round four finish look like? Or his five, round five finish look like? Um, maybe it doesn't score all that great. And is this going to be a, it's, it's, it's possible he gets takedowns along the way. I don't think he's going to go that route, but if I mean if anybody's getting takedowns in this fight, it would be Sonia Dong. And I think he does have some takedowns on his resume here, but I just think that he's just a faster, just better striker, and he's just going to win a five round decision. You know, uh, Gutierrez is is very very well, he's very well trained. I mean, he's a very very good striker. He has very very good leg kicks, and and he keeps people in range and and all this stuff and. I mean, he's not going to, it doesn't look like he's going to get run over, you know? So I don't know. It just seems to me that it's going to be a five round fight of, of, you know, of, of striking and those fights usually bust. And, and, and when you have ownership, which is always going to come with the main event, because you know what? Five rounds does give you the opportunity to have more volume, but okay. What does he win in a high volume five round decision? What does he get a hundred? That's, is that good? at maybe 35% ownership and 9,200? I don't know. So I'm probably inclined to get underweight on this one. Um, so let's just kind of review, right? So, so, so of these top guys, as far as the um, high salary guys, I mean, according to the numbers, I mean, Park and Tyra, just to me, just look like better plays. If not, at least the same. As as Sonia Dong, I, I think they're actually better because Tyra comes with the grappling upside, same inside the distance line, and Park has that just insane round one metric. So I put I put Sonia Dong third as far as these high spends. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I think I put Costa above above Sonia Dong too. I mean. Garcia just gets after it. And, and in Costa wins, it's going to be like a war, you know? And, and wars score pretty well, even in round two. You know what I mean? Like, because knockdowns, KOs, you know, I, I don't know. And even round tree, like in, 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 the ver in the variations where round tree wins, I mean, I think enough of them outscore Sonya Dong that I, I would maybe even make Sonya Dong fifth. Um. And 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 uh, Jun Young Park, I mean, is he not going to outscore Sonia Dong? So I'm probably going to be pretty underweight, honestly, on this main event. Um, but uh, Suma Derzy remains very very strong value. All those top guys look pretty good, and you could play some of those cheapos I talked about. Like, not to get into lineup construction, but you could play Garcia at 7200. And, either Muniz or Anthony Smith, and, and it doesn't take a genius to figure out how to fill out the rest of your lineups. 
Um, and then if you want low owned plays, you could play some of these mid range women I spoke about before, you know, Santos or Amanda or something like that. Um, all right, uh, that will do it for this video. We'll do a betting breakdown probably tomorrow and a last look kind of like lineup builds using Sabersim and really figuring out how to win that 100K probably Saturday morning. But we'll, we'll figure that out. Uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.